fortunate to see uh, the town historian George Parker as Vila and I were walking by. How are you, George? Very good, thank you. And George, you've been uh, celebrating these Fourth of Julys here in Chelmsford for many years, right? Right. I, uh, the first parade I attended and worked on was in uh, 1923 when I was nine years old. 1923, nine years old. And you worked on that? I handed out ribbons for the aides to the chief marshal. He asked me to take care of that. And what was the parade like then in 1923? Did you have all the floats coming down as we have now? or? It was uh, somewhat similar, but it was a hometown parade. They didn't have uh, bands from out of town or out of the country that had a local band. But then uh, all the grocery stores and the woodworkers and the local businesses, the cider mill put in uh, floats. Some of them were horse-drawn, but most of them were uh, trucks. And uh, then they always had the horrible section. That's the comic section. And that's the thing that people liked the most. The comic section? Yes. They liked to see their neighbors dressed up in crazy costumes. We don't do that anymore, do we, George, it seems? I wonder why. I don't know. I wish you did. Yeah. I think even now that uh, people would, a neighborhood group would get together and do something like that. Yeah. But in, go ahead. And there was one, uh, you were telling me there was one where there was an accident here in one of our Fourth of July celebrations in the 1800s, right? As the town historian, you know all about these things. What happened then, George? I think it was 18... Uh, 89, I'm not positive the exact date, there were three boys. Fred Sandham was one, and uh, the uh, Walter, oh, I can't think of his last name, his father ran the hotel in the block down. The Wilson block? Yes, and uh, they got permission to fire an old cannon, so they said they'd wake up the town at midnight. Well, they brought it down here on the common, Fired it once, went fine. Fired it a second time, it went fine. Third time, one of the men had his, uh, boys, had his thumb on the hole, vent hole probably, and I don't know whether a spark or something, he pulled his thumb off as they were ramming home a charge, and uh, it blew the ramrod out. And um, then uh, uh, one of the boys was killed immediately. Walter Simon Jr., he was the son of the man that ran the hotel. Oh. And Fred Sandham lost his right arm and his left eye and a couple of fingers on his left hand. Oh my goodness. And uh, he was fitted later on for an artificial limb made of wood and leather. And I recall with my mother, must have been 1920 or so, because this was before my time when the explosion took place. But we were in the market here, and Fred Sandham came in with that arm, and I saw, and I was scared stiff. I was probably only six, seven years old. Yes. And so the arm scared you, the wooden arm? Yeah. I and now it's uh, at the Historical Society or something, that wooden arm? I believe it is. Henry Erickson had it, and I think he gave it to the Historical Society. Oh. But uh, we had a celebration in 94, 1894, according to the books, I wasn't around. Uh, there was an impromptu affair. It had a town band, a part of it, leading one section, and then some marching units, no float. And then there was another section where there was a clown band, a takeoff on the first one, and all comic characters. And the report in the newspaper that my grandfather wrote says that uh, they marched from six to eight in the morning. Why it would be at six, I can't imagine. <laughs> but they went different neighborhoods. It wasn't a six hour, I mean a two hour parade. Yeah. Oh. And then the... And, yeah. George, do you have any idea when the first Chumpsford parade, uh, Fourth of July parade took place? Well, Okay. That was it, I oh. think. The what year was that, did you say, George? 90, 1894. 1894, oh. It wasn't an official parade. 95, there was more of an official parade. And the newspaper reports that there were 
uh, six to eight thousand people here. Of course, the population of Chelmsford was only three thousand at that time. They came out on streetcars from Lowell, riding on the top of the car. This I read, I wasn't here. And the thing that amazed the people was that there were three real, or a few, I think it was three real policemen from Lowell in order to keep the populace in order. And it said that the populace was used to keeping itself in order. They had never seen real policemen. We had constables, of course. They haven't, no? <laughs> so, uh, so what was it, the town like back then? I guess in the night, the first uh, parade that you helped out in was what, 1923? And the town, it was much more rural at that time, wasn't it? A lot of farmers, farmland? There was one in uh, parade in 1907 celebrating the parade and they had baseball game and two band concerts and fireworks. But then I guess the next one was 1923 and it was run by the Village Improvement Association and the Girl Scout Troop. There was one Girl Scout Troop and they ran it and they had booths at the end of the common towards the, towards the flagpole and uh, they ran all night. They started at 6 o'clock the night before it didn't close till six the night of the fourth. Wow. And uh, that's unusual, we don't do that. The next year, they had a Ferris wheel and a merry-go-round on the, this end of the common. Wow. One of the interesting booths, they were all run by scouts and churches and things like that, was uh, on the far side of the uh, stone seats is a maple tree. At that time, there was a pine tree there and uh, they uh, put a ladder up, made of two ropes about two feet apart with wooden slats. And then the ropes were joined together at the top and again the bottom. The bottom was tied to a stake and the top was tied to the tree. And the trick was to pay a dime and climb up okay. without tipping over. Oh. There weren't many people that did it, but if you did, there was a Cupid doll tied to the tree. You touch that then you won a prize, which was a Cupid doll. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And how were things later on in the celebrations? Like, you started in 1923. How about during World War II? Did we still have the parades then? No. Uh, as far as I know, they had one in 23 and 24. I don't think 25 they had a band concert or something. And then it, uh, I don't think of any more till uh, 68 when we started the present. Uh, that was our first attempt at parade as we have it now. But it was different. We didn't have any uh, out-of-state bands or things like that. They had local drum corps and bands. And uh, a lot of the organizations, the First Parish Church had a float. I know they had one the next year because I built it in my garage in 69. But uh, it was more localized, more uh, neighborly. Uh, one thing they did in the floats, they'd make uh, some kind of a figure, possibly a sphere, out of chicken wire and then push Kleenex through it, an awful job, to get the different colors. They would push Kleenex through chicken wire to get the different colors? Oh, yeah? Yeah, they, have a, they had a sphere. Oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Great idea. We have pictures of yeah. those. I have. A, scrapbook that all everything was in the newspaper from 68 on i missed but, one too i was out of the country by the way george speaking of books i recently borrowed from the chumpsford library your town history of chumpsford you have a lot of photographs of our our famous buildings here in fact you have the old town hall the wilson block the old town hall that is the town hall oh that's the town hall I make, I, i'm very fussy about that uh, it imply if it's an old town hall, it is old, it's a hundred years old, yes, but yes. it implies there's a newer one, and there is no newer one. That's the most Well, what about the one on Dilrica Road? That's the town office building. I so it's that. not the town hall? No, the selectmen were very adamant again about that before they moved up. I interviewed them because I'm writing history, I want to know. The only old town hall we have here is... Here? 
brick base of the church. Yes, we're standing here in front of the First Parish Church to let the people at home know. Right. Well, thank you very much, George. It's been, I'm so glad we were able to see you so you could give us that perspective on the town history and all the 4th of July's that we've celebrated in this wonderful town. Thank you very much, George Parkers, for being on the show. Glad to do it for you. Thank you.